Hello everybody, uh, let's start uh, the last talk of, of the day. Uh, so, so welcome, my name is uh, David Vavra. Uh, I work as uh, Android developer in a company called Avast. So probably uh, you might know Avast uh, from products Avast Antivirus, but uh, I'm from mobile department and uh, we are making uh, much more apps than just the antivirus in the, in the mobile space. Um, I'm also a GDG organizer in Prague, in Czech Republic, uh, and uh, I like that it as well as Michal here. Uh, so uh, this talk uh, was supposed to be about Google Glass originally. I was asked uh, at this conference about Google Glass, and uh, in the keynote uh, they said that I changed it because uh, Google Glass was cancelled, and uh, that's, that's not the... Uh, I should clarify this. Because uh, the Google Glass projects what wasn't actually cancelled, uh, just the Explorer program uh, w was cancelled. That's a program for early adopters. But the project uh, I itself, uh, like the test was successful and now uh, they will work on incorporating Google Glass into really consumer facing products. But it will take some time and uh, I expect that uh, uh, there will be some delay now between they announce uh, something. So, like at at, at this point, uh, it doesn't make sense uh, to uh, to talk about conferences uh, for developers uh, because maybe the whole API will change. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so that's that's why I changed uh, uh, the topic uh, to something uh, which I like as well, uh, which is uh, Android TV. Uh, so so today I will talk uh, about Android TV. First, I would like to start, uh, why do you think uh, Google is uh, uh, creating a new operating system for, for TVs? There are already uh, existing uh, systems for TVs. And, uh, they typically look like this. Uh, this is a screenshot from a Samsung TV, which you can, you can buy today. As you see, the user interface is quite uh, cluttered. Uh, there is... Uh, a sort of content, and it also looks like a stretched phone a little bit, like it's uh, similar icons as in phones. Uh, it didn't change much, and uh, I think it's a little bit confusing. So the UI is more something between computer and phone, and uh, I don't think this is really good. TV is uh, TV is different. Uh, then uh, this device is controlled by traditional TV remote control. Uh, probably have that in your home. With this big remote control, it, it has like 60 or more buttons, and you rarely use all of the buttons. You use just 10 of them, and you ignore just all the other. I don't think this is the good uh, user experience. And uh, I think the biggest disadvantage uh, is that right now, every manufacturer of TVs has different systems, so if you want to develop uh, apps for it, then you need to do it separately for, for, for each system, and it's a big blocker for developers. That's why there is uh, not many apps uh, for uh, smart TVs today. And uh, this might change with Android TV. So this is uh, how Android TV looks like. Uh, you can see that the UI is much simpler. It's specifically designed for TV. They call it the uh, lean back experience. That uh, the TV is uh, mostly enjoyed from the sofa, which is 10 feet from the screen uh, using uh, control by a controller. Uh, and it's designed for that. It's really content focused. It's less about apps, more about the content. I think the main reason. So it's controlled uh, either by, by a game controller or a phone. Uh, Android TV is great for games. It's one of the biggest uh, strengths. 
basically when you buy Android TV, uh, you are buying a, a gaming console as well because it's compatible with a lot of Android games and uh, it's powerful enough uh, for, for these games so you are buying a gaming console, you can uh, control it or, uh, or uh, you can control it with a phone, they have an app uh, for a phone uh, basic uh, and uh, there is a unified developer system uh, so, so right now uh, three manufacturers uh, support Android TV so when you when you develop an uh, app for Android TV it will run on all uh, all these uh, three types of TV I will show later which, uh, which is one and hopefully more manufacturers will join Android TV and easier for developers that's why more apps will uh, will grow uh, in this ecosystem so uh, now I would like to show you uh, in uh, in real time so here I have ADT1 which is a developer version of Nexus player it looks like this uh, I got it on Google IO conference and let's try to connect it Here we are again. It's always such a pleasure. Remember when you tried to kill me twice? Oh, how we laughed and laughed. Except I wasn't laughing. Under the circumstances, so as you can see, the Android TV is also hooked up to the people. So uh, it works as Chromecast. You can, you can cast content uh, from your phone and uh, cast the people. Uh, now I will control it with the game So this is the main screen. Uh, as you can see the top uh, she was a lot like you. The, the top, Maybe uh, not quite as heavy. Is showing now directly uh, created by various apps and your One app can, they uh, can push content there as so well. I could live forever. It's such uh, a shame the same here, will uh, never are the apps. You can connect four controllers, four people can play. How the basic user interface looks like. Now I want to show you my app. When I was preparing for this talk, I I was created an app. If it's called Music so uh, for for Lithic. Well, you Lithic have is, been uh, smart lights. I don't so need can, anyone uh, now. Uh, you know, I don't need home. you, maybe I'm not feeling so bad. So I created an app called Music, which uh, takes colors from the TV and mirrors them That's on the on the lights. So it works like uh, ambient music. Uh, and you can play music from your phone. So 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 you can play music from your phone. I, I tried to uh, live demo, but uh, there is some problem with the local Wi-Fi. So, so I'm sorry, but the, it looks like this. Uh, changes colors here, and the, the bulb changes. And if I exit, it keeps changing. But uh, instead of live demo, I will show you a YouTube video that works. All I want <laughs> is to this is from my living room. Great for the nature video. Deserved it for the colors, the colors from the screen. So, so this is uh, this is my app. Really good. Like so it looks like I switch back to the slides. I want to talk to you more about the hardware which is available now and will be available. 
very new platform so uh, much of it right now is in the market most of the market right now is the this player so it's like the first pioneer uh, it's made by Asus uh, as uh, in a basic uh, uh, basic hardware, but you can uh, run games pretty well. It's a very similar hardware with the I have uh, now, and the games are okay because they are optimized for the phone, so it will run here with no problems. But more interesting, more interesting is that these uh, three manufacturers uh, uh, really committed to Android TV, and they will replace their existing uh, smart TV systems with Android TV. So it's quite a huge uh, chunk of market. So Sony. Division so makes Philips TV and Sharp. So that's quite interesting. All the models for, for the next year will have uh, Android TV. So I hope you know, more manufacturers will join later in the San Francisco. Uh, of course, the biggest competitors are uh, Samsung and LG. They have their own systems. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, there is one more interesting device from a company called uh, Razer. So they created Razer for TV. Uh, it's specifically made for games. It has really the hardware for for the high-end games. And uh, uh, we have like, for consumers. Uh, uh, also, they created this thing called Blackboard. Uh, it's a keyboard with a mouse, but really designed to be on your lap. Uh, so, uh, so it's a nice, nice, nice hardware. Uh, Part, I would like to talk uh, about design. Because first, when you are trying to create an app for a platform, you need to learn something about the design behind it. So uh, first, really like for high level, there is a creative vision behind behind Android TV. Uh, so uh, it, uh, one of the part is called casual casual consumption, which means that really uh, the device is not a, not a phone, it's not a computer. Uh, it, it should. It's usually used casually from the uh, from the sofa from from ten feet, and it's also a shared experience. Uh, yeah, a lot of people from your family uh, will interact with it, uh, so uh, your app should reflect that. Uh, also, your app uh, should should follow uh, this is called the cinematic experience. Uh, so, as opposed on computers or phones, uh, they usually uh, show a lot of text. But on TV, the information uh, sh should should be shown in uh, uh, videos, pictures, uh, sounds, animation. But uh, you should really avoid text as much as possible. People don't want to read when they are looking at the TV. They they just want to immerse in the content content directly. So you should think about cinematic experience, and uh, it should be simple. Uh, so uh, users uh, should do uh, minimum steps to get to the immersive content they want. Uh, not all the apps make sense on the TV. They should not uh, input so much text. Uh, it's really uh, limit stuff like that. Maybe uh, tell them or take the phone and do it on the second screen. Uh, so now I will show you uh, some some patterns uh, in design. So navigation uh, is is done by the D-pad. D-pad has uh, four directions, uh, up, bottom, left, right. So there is no touch screen on TV, uh, obviously. And uh, uh, if you have some content, you, you should organize it in the grid. For example, videos, pictures, songs. You should organize it in the grid. And the uh, user can move like this. It's really important to uh, visibly select the, the currently selected item, re really make it stand out. So user will not uh, get confused. And uh, there is more to content organization if you have like deeper structure of your content. And uh, in the SDK there is uh, there is a library which will help you. Uh, you can edit uh, uh, via Gretel like this. It's called Leanback Library. It does a lot of work uh, creating this UI for you. And uh, if you generate a new project and you create uh, Android TV activity, it uh, generates all the code for you. It does quite a lot of inspiration. You can maybe start with this and then modify it. And this is how 
the generated code looks like the demo app. So the categories are the content are here. Then user can uh, press the D-pad right and go to the right. Here he selects the content he wants. Then there is this uh, detail of the content with some buttons. And so when he press play, it goes to the media player. And all these components are in the Leanback library. Uh, you can use them, it will save you development time. Uh, but you can also customize them, brand them, brand them to your brand. So uh, next I would like to talk about overscan. Uh, so uh, traditionally uh, TVs can uh, anytime uh, cut this part on the side. Uh, maybe historical, but uh, for example my, my TV does that uh, sometimes. So uh, you should not put any content or anything important here. You should put all content uh, in the exit safe zone. Uh, how in general TVs work. There is some some code. Uh, how, to, how if you have a custom layout of your activity, you just uh, you can put margins here or paddings, and this is how it looks in DP basically. But if you use the standard uh, components from the lean, lean back library, it, it, they, are, they already add these paddings. They already do this for you. So now uh, let's move to some development tips. Uh, are specific to, to Android TV. So first, uh, some some basics. So Android TV uh, runs on Lollipop. It's a full uh, Lollipop API. Uh, maybe I should uh, talk a little bit about Google TV, which is uh, like previous attempt uh, from Google uh, to like take over the living living room, which which didn't work out. Uh, so so the difference is that. Uh, Google TV was uh, branched uh, from uh, from Android, but it has really specific APIs just uh, just for Google TV, and uh, this is more integrated. Like all the TV specific APIs are also in the phones and, and, and tablets, uh, so it's everything. Everything is in Lollipop, uh, so so you just develop for one platform. It's, it's not it's not separated. There is an emulator for it, so you don't necessarily need. Uh, uh, TV for for development, uh, but I think it's better. But there is there is an emulator which helps you. And uh, when you when you develop and you create uh, an app, uh, you you have to know that the TV of course doesn't have all the sensors as phones or watches. Uh, but but Android uh, re really nicely uh, can handle this. You just need to in your manifest. You, you just need to. Uh, you find that like uh, GPS is optional, telephone is optional, uh, stuff like that. If you if you uh, say in your manifest that like GPS is required, uh, Google Play Store will filter out uh, the, the application and users will not be able to install it. Uh, maybe uh, it's interesting to talk about distribution. It's distributed uh, to the same Play Store, uh, just like any any other app. But there is a check mark uh, like published to Android TV, and when you do it, there is a rapid process uh, which which can make you featured in the Google Play Store on the TV. But even if you are not featured, uh, any user can install it if, if, it's not, uh, if you don't specify uh, some hardware. Which is so it, it's quite open. Uh, here is a, a snippet from uh, from my app uh, from Music. Uh, what I added there to uh, work on uh, one TV. It also, uh, by the way, the app also works on the phones and tablets, uh, so, so you can control your lights from your phone, phone and tablet. If you want. Uh, so uh, here uh, I have to say that uh, it requires this lean back, but uh, if I set it will not be possible to install it to phone and tablet. I say because it's possible to install it everywhere. I have to say that it doesn't require touch screen. Because TV doesn't have touch screen. And there is a, there is a new theme which helps you with the UI on TV. It's similar to like material or holo. So there is a, there is a lean back theme. And uh, 
something specific for TV is this banner. So on TV, the banner works instead of uh, launcher icon. So uh, TV doesn't use launcher icons, it uses this banner. Just a different kind of thing. And uh, also, what you need is one of your activities uh, should ha if, uh, have this feedback launcher over there. Uh, it will be shown uh, on the So, so that, that's all. Now let's move to uh, recommendations API. There is recommendations API. Uh, the recommendations look like this. And uh, any apps can use recommendations about content. Uh, this, this is very visible. It's your first row. When you so that directly comes into your content. So you can set it in the uh, examples of the two buttons to play. So how to do it? It's notifications API. Uh, it's standard on the notifications, so the API is the same. Uh, the Android driver also uses notifications API. Uh, but there are some specialties, so uh, for every foundation application, uh, you need to set category, you need to set category, and uh, specify that this is recommendations. Also, uh, the notification uh, should be only local. There is methods set only local. Uh, if you don't do that, the notification can appear on other devices, like your smartphone or your watch, and like, you don't want that, you want it just on the TV. Uh, and also the notification should be ongoing, uh, so it doesn't disappear. So how to create these notifications? So you can create them how you, how you want, uh, but there is a best practice uh, to create a service uh, for it, which is uh, launched periodically, and periodically it maybe checks your server and uh, creates the, create the recommendations and put it uh, to, the, to the notifications there. You can use all standard Android uh, components, uh, like you can listen to broadcast to receivers if something happens, then you create a recommendation. So, so nothing uh, TV specific here. And uh, you should not uh, forget to remove them as well. Uh, for example, when the user like clicks your notification, so if he has seen the content, you should remove the ongoing notification. Or also, also, you should do some clearing, like if, if he didn't, uh, uh, if he didn't uh, use the notification for a week, for example, so then he's not totally interested, so you should delete the notification. You can add some different content, so you will affect the so, uh, Next part is uh, search API. Uh, so Android TV has a unified search. The, in the whole system, and uh, apps can uh, can connect uh, to the to the search. So, for example, YouTube is connected to uh, there. Users can can search using their voice. So that's that's pretty, pretty a nice way how to do text on Android TV. Uh, some of the controller controllers have microphone. The TV itself doesn't have microphone, but the controllers can have microphone. The, the gaming controller I have doesn't. Microphone, but uh, there are some others with us. So that's quite a nice way how to input text. Uh, other way is uh, when you are controlling TV with your phone, the on screen keyboard on the phone uh, pops up. You can type text on your phone, and uh, even if, if you don't have this, uh, there is an on screen keyboard on your TV. That's, I think, like uh, the, the worst user experience, but it's, the, it's still pretty usable. So how to how your app can uh, connect to the search? So uh, it's again standard Android component. Uh, you create a content provider, and there are some defined columns you need to implement in your content provider. So what are these columns? There are a lot of them, but there is just three required columns you need to have in the content provider. So first one is the text. That's this text. 
And then there is content type, so type of your content, like the video, image, uh, song, and the production year. I don't know why, why it's there. Maybe it uses it somehow, but it's required. And uh, so you create this content provider, which provides uh, provides the data for the search. And also you need to create this searchable XML file uh, where you describe the content provider at some metadata about it. Uh, you can read more in the documentation. Uh, but the its basic idea is just content provider. Now I want to talk about controllers. So movies can uh, handle uh, multiple controllers. So these are controllers for the next player. Uh, this is the basic controller, and this is the game pad. So uh, any controller compatible with Android TV needs to handle these uh, buttons. So the D-pad for directions, and then like select, like OK, confirm, back and home. So you can count uh, that the controller will at least uh, always, always have this. And like every app. Even like if the game is uh, a uh, gamepad, it should be at least uh, you should be able to at least exit the game with the normal uh, using just this. So you can you can tell the user that uh, he needs a game controller, but he should be able to exit. And uh, how do in your code how do you react to this event? So uh, again, it's pretty uh, Android uh, standard. Uh, methods you override in your activity, so it dispatch a generic motion event, and this event uh, is used for, for events where there is more data to it. For example, uh, when you move joystick, uh, then there is a position like uh, X axis change. So these type of events are handled in, in this method, uh, typically the joystick or Maybe a rotation of the device, just like that. And uh, then there is dispatch event, and then just four buttons. So just button presses are here. So there is a list of different buttons. Uh, and quite easy to handle. You can also have multiple controllers. So uh, one controller can be connected to the TV at the same time, and you will you will get uh, events. To Methods uh, from all of them. Uh, Android CD assigns unique ID to each controller. So you can assign, for example, in your game, you can assign this ID uh, to the player, like if there is a player game. And then, you can, like, uh, for example, this spaceship, so you can use the separately. So, so this is uh, really visible. And uh, now there is Implementation detail. What if uh, what if the controller disconnects uh, like during the game or something? Somebody leaves or the the controllers also uh, they try to save power. So so after a few uh, like minutes of inactivity, they automatically turn off. And uh, it's pos it's needed uh, to add these config changes uh, to activities where this could happen. Because if you didn't add these config changes, uh, the activity would restart itself. It's same uh, as on like uh, phone Android if you rotate the screen, that the activity is destroyed and the new activity is created. And you don't want this uh, on, a, on a TV. Be bad so you should, uh, you should add these config changes and handle the configuration to change yourself. So you will get a callback and then react accordingly that the controller was disconnected or maybe the controller was connected. Uh, there is a, like, a recommend, recommended what, what you should do in the game. When the controller disconnects, you should display some pop-ups, some, some dialogue, and you should, you should uh, tell the user that the controller was disconnected. Do you want to like, remove this player from the game? Or uh, maybe you want to reconnect the, uh, the controller. Better. And if your game needs a game gamepad, uh, you should specify uh, in, uh, manifest as well, and uh, uh, other people will know and will notify the user. 
because it was controls. Now I want to uh, talk more about games because I think games are really like killer feature of Android TV. As I said, uh, when you buy Android TV, you're buying a gaming console. This screenshot is from a uh, game Skyforce. Uh, do any of you know Skyforce on phones? You play? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Android developers are playing this game. <laughs> Very yeah, so it's great, uh, great game on, on phones and tablets. It's from Poland. Right? Uh, and uh, on phones, the game is on portrait. It's just it's locked on portrait. It's even made for portrait. And uh, they created Android TV version. And actually, uh, they uh, they changed the layout to support landscape. Uh, so all the games on TV should run in landscape. And they done it pretty well. And they also added uh, local multiplayer. And that really makes sense on the TV because in your living room uh, there are more people like your family or friends. So it's really easy to uh, and uh, great to play together. So they added local multiplayer. Just uh, more controllers and you play. It's fun. Yeah, uh, I will repeat uh, once more that the overscan is really important because uh, my TV uh, really crops the, the corners and there are uh, some games which like uh, supposed to be optimized for the Android TV but uh, some of the controls are cropped on the side and they should fix that. Uh, usually when they port the game from Android they, they forget about this overscan. And, uh, in your manifest, if it's a game, you just speci specify it like, uh, easily, like this, it's a game. And then it will uh, the launcher will appear on the second row. There is, uh, first is the recommendations, then apps, and then games. So it will appear in the game. If you do this. And it's also a good idea uh, to use uh, Google Play uh, game services. You don't have to, uh, but they provide a lot of uh, functionality for you, like the social stuff or if uh, two, two, like, two people can, uh, want to connect uh, online, it, it does all the networking for you. It also does uh, saving uh, like saved games to the cloud. It saves saved games to the cloud. A lot of, lot of stuff already there for you. And uh, uh, I'm getting at the end of my presentation, and I, I want to share a little bit about MoodSync, how I did it, how it works. Uh, it's open source app. You, you can check it out all the code here on my here on GitHub. And it's using a new API in Lollipop uh, called Media Projection. So at, for the first time, we have the ability to share screen, uh, not just in your app, but in the whole system, and maybe send it over network or something. With this Media Projection API, and I'm using it uh, for uh, taking screenshots. Uh, Basically, so I'm taking screenshots uh, every like 200 milliseconds, uh, and then I use a palette library. Palette library is uh, uh, in the official; it's part of support library from Google. And what it does, it extracts uh, some uh, important colors from any image. So I'm using this library, and it gives me from any image it gives it's called a vibrant color. I use this vibrant color, and then using Clifix SDK, the bulb set that you integrate SDK, so I transfer the, the color to the bulb. And uh, maybe uh, so from the implementation, when, when I was uh, developing it, actually this is, uh, so, so first uh, I just changed the color immediately when, when it was on the TV. But it was uh, it wasn't good. It was uh, it was blinking really fast, and uh, I, I got sick. So <laughs> my my girlfriend actually uh, renamed the app like epilepsy for Android. <laughs> so I changed it. I debugged it, and uh, you can on the Lifix you can change the color slowly. So, so uh, now I am changing the color over two seconds. So it's really slow, and it's more like uh, that's why I call it mood sync. More like uh, it's not—it's not, it's not like epilepsy blinking, but it's really so. That, uh, so that's it. Uh, 
Before I end, uh, I, I want to tell, tell you that uh, Avas Mobile, uh, our company, uh, we are hiring a lot in, in Prague. If you, if you want to move to Prague, it's a great opportunity. Uh, this, is, uh, this is from April Fool's Day. This is office of our CEO. We did that. <laughs> Funny. Uh, it, if you're just interested uh, about uh, work for Avas, just uh, send me email. And uh, th that's it uh, from my presentation. Here is more documentation. Uh, Craig just sort of has gave you the overview, but uh, uh, if you want to uh, dive now it's uh, time for questions. In general, uh, it should be one up. So same with Android Wear, it should be one up, which one runs everywhere, and uh, we just create different activity for TV, which will have maybe different layout, but all the logic and everything uh, should be in one up. Yeah, uh, there is an API for that, for like for live TV, they call it live TV. Uh, I didn't cover it in my presentation, but you can find it in the There is one. Yeah, there is uh, Android Media Player uh, on the phones. They uh, they improved it in Lollipop, but now, now it's the same. Uh, but uh, maybe you are asking if there is uh, app for that, like for browsing for mobile, right? B built in. Yeah. So there is not, but it's definitely possible to do it. With the it's not by there by default. There is no question for me. Uh, the developer has to specifically uh, say in the manifest that this is, is for TV and uh, specifically say which acti activities are for TV. So uh, you cannot install any uh, anything which is not specifically enabled by the developer. Uh, but yeah, the concept is the same. It, it will work. If the developer does it, you can sh you can show the like tablet UI. And okay, so thank you.